Before I get started, I want to show the response of the speaker as it is right now. I very quickly set things up so I could use the speakers. And as you can see, it's pretty smooth already. So now I'm going to turn on the mini DSP interface and I'm going to switch to configuration one. And then I'm going to reset that configuration back to the factory default. Uh, the first thing I need to look at is routing because I've already got the wires running into the mini DSP and I'm not using the analog input on the DSP. Everything is digital from the computer to the DSP and there it gets converted to analog. So output one and two are the tweeter left and right. Output three and four are the mid range left and right. Output five and six are the mid woofer left and right. Output seven and eight are the woofer left and right. And the subwoofer is on the digital output at spit of one for the left channel and spit of two for the right channel. So you really have to look at this as a five way speaker system with a tweeter, mid range, mid woofer, woofer and subwoofer on each channel. And since I'm working on the right speaker, I'm going to mute everything else and I'm going to start with the tweeter and run the measurement on that. And I want to set an initial crossover. I'm just going to change that to 500 and I'll leave the slope as it is for now. I forgot to turn on the sound. Okay, so we'll get rid of that measurement and start again. Okay, so that's the raw response of the tweeter. And looking at that, that's pretty smooth. But if I change the slope on that to something lower and I move it up to say 2800 and run the sweep again, this is the result right here. Now, other than that dip that's happening because of the horn up here in the very, you know, top end, it's really flat as it is. I don't really need to do anything at all with this. And I'm going to mute that one now and go to the mid range. I'm basing all of this on my previous setup. So I'll probably be crossing this one around 800 to that 2800 on the tweeter. All right, so this is the mid range right here and also get rid of that first measurement. And here's the tweeter. You can see the mid range is a little bit higher and then the tweeter. It's also a little bit more jagged. There's a little bit more room um, uh, interaction. I'm not gating these um, measurements, which is what you're really supposed to do. I'd rather work with the 124th smooth response. I could also change that to something like psychoacoustic and that would, you know, maybe give me a better representation, but I'm not going to be too aggressive with how I, you know, try to equalize or smooth this out. When I look at this and I look at the tweeter response, these two should blend well. I just need to either raise the tweeter up a little bit or cut the mid range. And you can see that that they blend really well. It still looks like the mid range is a little bit hotter than the tweeter, but I'm going to leave it for now. So let's go back to the DSP. We'll close that crossover and we're going to mute um, both of those again, and we're going to turn on the mid woofer. Okay. Well, when I compare that to the other two, I can see that that's quite a bit down and it's also sloping down. I just want to quickly look at the distortion here and distortion on this looks really good. There's no, no peaks. The response, it looks like it's low. I know it's low because this, um, mid range is not as uh, efficient as the other two. So I'm going to have to raise the, uh, the output on this. I'm also going to have to maybe address this slope with, uh, equalization and possibly this dip at around 650. Run the measurement again and see what that does. Okay. I really didn't do much with that dip at all. You can see. But you can see now that the level is higher. I'm going to get rid of that first measurement. 
it's still tilting downwards and it's not high enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to broaden that, come back to the crossover and I'm going to change that first slope. And then I'm also going to bump it up even higher. Okay, as you can see, that flattened it out a little bit. I want to quickly look at distortion and make sure nothing's happening. And it doesn't look like it. I mean, distortion, of course, goes up as the volume goes up. I'm not putting a lot of uh, stock in distortion, but, you know, it's, it's important to keep your eye on this just to make sure that nothing evil is happening. Go back to the DSP. I'm going to turn on the tweeter. I'm going to turn on the mid-range and we'll see how they blend with a new measurement. Okay, that doesn't look like a, a big difference, but you can see, yeah, it's, it's come down, it's a little bit more even. I'll delete this. I, I like to stay on top of deleting the old measurements when I get something new. Now, the next one we can work on is the woofer. So I'll mute the tweeter, mid-range, and mid-woofer, and turn on the woofer. I know that I'm crossing over at 80 on the low end and 300 on the upper end, and 24. Actually, I'm going to leave it. Well, no, I'm going to leave. I'm going to say 24 and we'll run a measurement. Okay, so this is the woofer output from, here it is, 80 right here, up to around 300. Check the distortion, and that's looking good. But once again, it looks like the output is, well, it needs to be raised a little bit. And then rather than run the measurement again, I'm just gonna turn on the tweeter, mid-range and mid-woofer, and see what that looks like that doesn't look bad i mean as far as level match goes now there is a little bit of a, a dip here at 300 maybe if i change the slope on the woofer filter hang on let's look at the mid woofer again let's just change it to a something more steep and then try again and see what that does okay so look at that 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 actually fixed it if we look across, we can see this is really nice and flat. So I'm going to go and I'm going to turn on the swab buffer, fix the crossover on that. I'm going to make 20 and 80. I'm going to leave the slopes at 48 for both. Okay, that doesn't look too bad at all, right? When we compare it to this, it didn't really pull anything down here. There's no obvious cancellation. Um, it looks like response is falling off here though. I'm gonna try inverting the output on the subwoofer and see what that does. Yeah, I could actually hear that hole in the response when uh, the measurement was happening. I could hear that suck out. So this is the correct polarity. It's just that I'm not getting a lot of um, output down low. Uh, one problem I notice on the right side in this room is that there is a little bit of an interaction with the room. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to say that this is good. Okay. This looks like good response to me for one speaker, because what, what you got is you got two speakers in the room and I want to see what the other speaker does when that's, you know, set to these same settings and, you know, playing with the other one, I can measure both at the same time from the listening position, see how much bass I have down low. And of course, some of you are saying you can't do that. You can't, you know, measure speakers that way, especially the low frequency ones. Too much of the room is interacting and that's true, but it's more true in an untreated room. Uh, finish up, I thought I would do a couple of off axis measurements. This first one is at 25 degrees. And then the second one is a 45 degree off axis measurement. I'm going to wrap up the video by saying that this is a very rough example of setting up the digital crossover. I actually spent another two hours fine tuning things before I was happy with how they sounded.